Hello and welcome back to Financial Madness, where we look at all things personal finance. In today's video, we will talk about what you could expect when you retire, whether that time has come now or is in the near future. So I really wanted to do a video like this, as many financial videos, including my own, tend to focus on the need to save for your retirement, and the earlier the better, blah blah blah. But what I thought would be interesting is to delve into what happens when you reach that point and what you could expect. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Matters, helping you be better with your money. Pow. So first up, let's discuss the three most common types of pensions, what they are and when you can access them. Then we'll move on to how to access each of them and key things to consider. So the first type of pension is called the defined contribution pension, which is what the majority of us will have. They are common in workplace pensions and private personal pensions like SIPs. The way these work is that you and your employer, if it's a workplace pension, put money into a fund which in return is invested in the market, with the idea that the fund makes a good enough return in the long run and you can retire on this money. The earliest age you can access this type of pension is 55, but this is increasing to 57 after 2028. The second type is the defined benefits pension, and these have become less and less common in recent years, but they are still prevalent if you have a workplace pension and you are in the public sector. You can still find these pensions in the private sector, but they are extremely rare and likely to be legacy pension schemes if you do have one. This type of pension can only be obtained via the workplace and works by having a retirement salary paid out to you from retirement until the day you die. And normally the amount of retirement salary is determined by your years of service and your salary whilst you are working there. The earliest age for this type of pensions do vary. For the public sector, this is known as the normal pension age and it can range from 60, 65, or it follows the state pension age, which will vary depending on the date of your birth. There are options to take it earlier than the normal pension age, but you are likely to suffer a penalty for the early payout. Do ask your pension contact what your minimum pension age is to find this out, but it is likely to find the defined contribution pension age, so 55 or 57. For legacy schemes outside of the public sector, the age to access your pension will most likely be following the defined contribution age as well, so again, 55 to 57, but again, do check with your provider to confirm. And then finally, we have the state pension age, which is the pension that we get from the government. Not everyone is able to obtain the state pension age. You do have to be of a certain age and have at least 10 years of national insurance contributions. On a standard basis, as there are ways to top up your state pension, but ignoring that for the time being, there is a minimum and maximum amount of state pension that everyone can receive. And this is attributed to how many national insurance contributions you make. Currently, the state pension age is 66 for both men and women, but this will increase to 67 from the 6th of May 2026, and it will further increase to 68 between the years of 2044 and 2046. If you are unsure what your state pension age is, check out the link in the description box down below and simply enter your date of birth and voila. And if you subscribe to this channel, voila, you'll be up to date with all my personal finance videos. One thing that is worth noting is that the ages I just spoke of across all three types are just the minimum ages you can claim your pension. You don't necessarily have to claim it there and then. You do have the option to defer the claim if you wish. It's also worth pointing out that you can have multiple pension incomes. In fact, most of us are likely going to have at least two of the three types that I've just mentioned. They're probably going to be the state pension age plus either a defined contribution or a defined benefits pension. You can even have a pension income from all three types if applicable. Now let's say we are ready to retire. What do we do now? I'll break down what you need to do across all three types of pensions. However, I will always say that it is advisable to seek professional advice when you reach this stage as there can be certain tax implications that are always ever changing. So do consider that as an option when you reach this point too. Starting off with the defined contribution scheme. Now this may differ between companies, but to kickstart the process off, you will have to reach out to your pension provider and let them know of your intention to begin withdrawing from your pension and how you would like to do so. When you reach the minimum age requirement, currently 55, soon to be 57, the provider is likely to reach out to you via email and post, informing you that you are soon to be eligible for withdrawing and provide guidance on how to do so and expected timelines. Normally the process of requesting a withdrawal can be done online or over the phone. If we look at one example from Standard Life, which is actually where my current private pension sits, they provide a list of things that you would need to provide to them to access your pension. So you will need your bank details, personal ID, proof of address, national insurance, and in typical British fashion, some tea and biscuits at the ready, as this will likely to be a lengthy chit chat. You will also be discussing how you would like to take your money out. This is when you decide if you want to take your money via an annuity 
or drawdown method. If those phrases are alien to you, check out this video here where I talk about both of these in more detail. But in gist, a drawdown is the more flexible of the two options as you can decide at any given time how much you want to take out from your pension pot while keeping the remaining pension pot invested in the market and hopefully earning you further returns. The main downside to this is ensuring you have enough money to finance your entire life after retirement, as for most cases, this can be very tricky to deduce. And that is a problem that getting an annuity solves, which is the second option to access your pension. It works by essentially exchanging your pension pot for a guaranteed retirement salary until the day you die. This solves the problem that is normally attributed to a drawdown as you will have a salary for your entire retirement life. However, post agreeing to an annuity, you cannot obtain any additional funds from your pension if you happen to need it. Perhaps you have an expensive bill to pay. So once you have decided what you will do, they will review the effects of your choices and their implications. The Standard Life website also offers a link to PensionWide, which offers free financial advice on what to do with your pension savings. Again, seeking professional advice is highly recommended and I'll leave a link to PensionWise in the description box down below. The timeframe of having a call and getting the money into your account does vary, but it does suggest having an agreement in place at least eight to 12 weeks before you would like your first payment as the process can be quite lengthy to kickstart. The earlier in advance you notify them, the less likely your desired first payment date will be missed. Moving on to defined benefit schemes, these are a bit more straightforward. Again, as you approach the required retirement age, the pension provider is likely to get in touch with you, informing you of this, but you would have to actively reach out to them to kick start the process. Normally there is an application form for you to fill in. This form may differ depending on if you are still employed with the company or not. Again, you have the option to take your pension benefits as they are, or you can convert some of those benefits into a lump sum cash. Again, you will be limited to 25% tax free, but by doing so, it will reduce your pension benefits as a whole. If you are one of my viewers who also works for the NHS, then I made a dedicated video on how this works from an NHS pension perspective, which is a type of defined benefits pension. So do check that out if you would like to learn more. And lastly, we have the state pension. To claim your state pension, much like the others, as you do approach your state pension age, you would normally receive a letter about four months in advance informing you that you are soon able to claim on your state pension. And this letter will have a specific invitation code. If you look at the government website, they state that if you are three months away from your state pension age, then you can indeed request an invitation code if one hasn't already been sent to you. Once you have the code, you can then apply online by phone or by post. Now speaking across all pensions, so state, defined contribution and benefits, it's important to note that in all circumstances, there is an action on you to actively claim it. These payments don't magically appear in your bank account. So please be sure you are reaching out to them with enough notice. By doing nothing, your payments will continue to be deferred until you actively claim on them. And I would actually encourage you to understand what that could mean for you if you do decide to delay your pension date, as there may be certain circumstances that delaying your pension may actually be preferable for certain individuals. Now moving on to things to consider when planning and approaching your retirement. First up, and I've already mentioned this, is that you can typically take up to 25% of your private pension as a tax-free lump sum. Please do factor this in when you are planning. And also you don't need to immediately take this 25% tax-free lump sum. You can take it at a later date if you wish. Now I did record a video on this topic already where I explain how the 25% tax-free cash works and how to claim more than that. So if you want to learn more, then check out this video. Secondly, you will be subject to income tax when you retire. Excluding the 25% tax-free lump sum, any other withdrawals you make will be subject to income tax for that tax year. Let's say in one year you take £18,000. Assuming the taxes are the same as today, £12,570 of this will be tax-free as you do have a yearly personal allowance. And the remainder will be subject to a 20% income tax. So please bear in mind that taxes can be applied to pensions too. Another thing to consider is the Pension Lifetime Allowance or LTA. It is the limit set by the UK government on the total amount you can accumulate in your pension pot before facing any additional tax charges. Now this restriction has indeed been removed by the current Conservative government. So if you are accessing your pension after the 6th of April 2023, it shouldn't be a concern and it is set to be abolished later this year. However, with an election on the horizons, a shakeup in the government may see it reinstated. With the Labour government having pledged to reverse these changes once in power, so don't count this one out just yet, which is why I've still kept it in this video. The last lifetime allowance amount was just over one million pounds, just for some perspective. And finally, be sure to seek out professional advice. 
I have already mentioned PensionWise, which offers free advice if you are over 50 and have a defined contribution pension. Otherwise, this is a service you are normally expected to pay. I will leave a link to unbiased.com, which can help you get in touch with the right financial advisor. Cool, so that is it for today's video. That was a lot to unpack. So if you do have any questions or knowledge you want to share, drop it in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye. Bye.